half here. Yeah. He's 11-4 and four now, but fortunately for Reed, it looks like with the win, he'll be able to make top eight. Same thing can be said here for Jessup. Now, of course, tiebreakers and all that math, not entirely sure. It looks like if one of the X4s makes it in this tournament, it will be Reed. So we will see how things do go here. Yeah. Again, for Jessup, if he wins, he's 100% in. There's all, if Jessup is going to win it in, Reed, it's a little more complicated. There are some players very close to Reed in the standings who could break or jump him if he wins. So we'll just say if Reed wins to be continued. Yes. Jessup starts off with a judge's familiar. You do have to wonder how Reed feels about seeing that on the other side of the table as Jessup will draw a card for the turn. We'll see can't, if he's able to curve out. Can't be happy with it, but it's not a Cloudfin Raptor. Judge's familiar is really just an enabler in this matchup. It doesn't counter very many things. It is a blue, you know, it is a one mana, one mana's worth of blue devotion, which is relevant. But Jessup having no turn to play, this is a window that Reed could actually exploit. Let's see if Reed has some sort of mana accelerant here. Again, he does have four copies of Voyaging Seder, four copies of Sylvan Carry added, and four Elvish Mystics, but none of the above. Just a stomping ground tapped and passes the turn back. The danger here is that outside of these four Pelucranos, Reed does not have an answer to Master of Waves. That guy will go unchecked in this matchup. Which, and I don't, despite the fact that Mono Green does have powerful plays, I don't know if it can compete with Master. Just another copy of Judge's Familiar there for Jessup before past the turn back, so not a very explosive draw for him at all. Duke will have, of course, your crew fix here. Top card is a copy of Nissa World Waker, and he will kick the turn back over to Jessup. Yeah, Nissa probably won't be very, doesn't seem like it'll be very relevant in this matchup. It's a little expensive. What Reed is going to try to do is. One, survive the early game, and then two, do something really big, really fast. A Bind of Thassa shows up here for Jessup. That means he's going to be able to deal two points of damage, but more importantly, he's going to draw two cards. And this will really put it to the test, right? How much, like, how much, how explosive can Jessup be? Because he's given Reed enough time to maybe assemble some pieces of Devotion, some Nykthos. You know, like around turn five or six is when these green Devotion decks start doing things that are just unanswerable. And despite the fact that he's, Andrew's drawing a lot of cards, if Reed gets to that turn six, I don't think it'll really matter how many cards Jessup has drawn. If Reed's doing stuff like Pelucranos with X equals seven, Andrew can have all the cards in the world. He doesn't have any way to contest. An attack for two. A trigger from Nykthos will gain Duke a life. He's up to 17, and now here is Pelucranos. So one on top of the deck, and now one in play. And I think if Jessup doesn't have a hybridization or a Cyclonic Rift for this Pelucranos when Reed goes to Monstrous it, this is exact. This is how Reed wants the game to play out. Yeah. Like you have to assume your opponent Mono Blue is going to do something, right? But Reed is much more scared of damage than he is of cards, and Jessup's drawing cards. Reed has a shot. The spells in Jessup decks, he's got six of them: three Rapid Hybridization, a Domestication, then two Bind of Thassa. Yeah. He has a he does have a Cyclonic Rift in the main. Does he have one He does not have the Domestication. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. But so the the one Cyclonic Rift and three Rapids are important. Remember, Jessup's deck plays one Nykthos to have these really powerful turns, whereas Reed's deck plays four. Two copies of Cloud from the Raptor. Here comes Another the Air Force. Familiar. Gonna evolve these guys. Well, I'm gonna just beat you up with a bunch <laughs> of 1-1 one -one flyers. Here's five of them. It's like, it's like casting Lingering Souls the hard way. Oddly enough, I've watched a lot of Mono Blue Devotion. I have never seen it this sort of draw before. <laughs> Which is, I, I know it's a weird thing to say, but it's a really weird draw from Jessup. Right. Yeah, Judges Familiar and uh, two more Judges Familiars. Yeah. And some, more, some more things. Now, the tough part here is that Jessup has drawn a lot of extra cards, and he has two mana available, right? He's got the Island of the Mutavol at the ready. So now Duke has to make the decision of, what can I play around? What spells do you have in your deck? I don't have your exact deck list. So what can I do? He needs a big monstrous this turn, and he needs Jessup to not have rift or domestic rift or hybridization. It's probable that Jessup does have one of them. He's drawn a lot of cards. If Reed gives Jessup one turn with this, with all these flyers to draw five cards, Jessup's getting close to 100% to have one of them. Yeah. Well, one of the best players in the world is going to try to figure out exactly what to do here. So Duke is going to consider his options as he always does in his methodical way. Never takes any turn too quickly. This is one of the more beatable draws out of Mono Blue. And even then, I'm not sure Reed's going to beat it. The matchup does just seem difficult. It's certainly game one. Game two, he's going to get a lot more interaction, as you guys will see once we discuss the sideboards. Yeah. It's a Courser. 
So he has one mana floating, which means he can play this Nykthos off the top. You're going to see him do it. And he can activate it for now six green. Of course, he'll gain a couple of life in the process there as well. Yeah. Normally, that life gain is important here. Because of how this game's played out, I don't really think it's about life points. Once Jessup's drawing six a turn, it hardly matters what Reed is doing. No. So Dukes is 17 with the green mana floating. We'll activate Nykthos here for six green. This is the Genesis Hydra. X is four. Right, we'll see it's Stomping Ground, Voyaging Seder, Nylea, God of the Hunt, and Temple of Malice. No hesitation, it's Nylea for Reed. And the necessary devotion is here for Nylea. So this is, uh, this is an interesting situation because the race is on. Reed could untap and win. Yeah. The danger here is that, well, Jessup does have one Cyclonic Rift in the main. If that happens, Reed's, Reed's done for. If he just swings and then, well, I guess he would need to have Nykthos and Cyclonic Rift to overload it. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. You get to see which player can go over the top. I actually think when the blue deck has a Nykthos, they can go toe to toe with the green deck's Nykthos draws. It's just that they have three fewer Nykthos. Voyaging Seder, the top card revealed there for Duke. Can he win this race? The, this race is very interesting because Jessup isn't dealing a ton of damage in this race, but he's drawing all those cards, which means the likelihood of him finding a Rapid Hybridization or a Cyclonic Rift is very high, and also Master of Waves, too. Oh, Lufranos. Looks like it wants to rumble on into the red zone here in just a moment. Why not? It's not doing anything else. And now has Trample. Yep. It'll swing on in. The Corsair of Crufix, that's going to hang back, however. The Dane, yeah, Corsair would trade with two creatures. It wouldn't even be that bad if you wanted to swing a Corsair, really. It would get, I guess it would trade with, you could get eaten by Mutavolt. You'd trade with a Mutavolt, probably. Yeah. yeah, it's not all that interesting an attack, it looks like. Here is a Rapid Hybridization. Can't be too surprised about that if you're Duke, right? Um, that could have been a lot worse, right? Reed could have... I mean, he was holding that in case Reed went for the monstrous ability. Uh -huh. Reed, I think, successfully read that, and so he didn't. He said the danger here is if Jessup draws five and he draws a Nykthos and a Cyclonic Rift, the game is going to be over. Yeah. Now, of course, I think if you're Reed, that is certainly a concern. But can you yep. play around that? No. Nope. Not at all. You just hope it doesn't happen. Yeah, not at all. Finding Nylea was a really good play for Reed. So the bigger concern to me would be if Jessup had draws five, he almost certainly has a Master of Waves as well. And a lot of times Jessup could swing for five in the air, draw five, play Master of Waves, make just a ton of one ones, and at that point, just chump everything that Reed does. But Nylea gives all of Reed's creatures trample. A Frostman Word pre-combat is going to evolve the Cloud and Raptors. And now it's time for all these flyers to get in the red zone. An attacker 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7 is going to put Duke down to 10. Five triggers from the Bidens. It's probable that Reed can kill, that Jessup can kill Reed next turn. He did draw another, psych, another rapid hybridization in there. And actually, if I'm Andrew, I may immediately rapidly hybridize something. I may rapidly hybridize something <laughs> um, just to take down Reed's devotion count. Even if you wait and rapid during the upkeep, because say you don't want an attacker, we can in response nick those a bunch of mana and pump guys. Tide Miner Mage is going to shut down the Genesis Hydra. Biggest creature that Jessup has on the table will not be attacking next turn. The mono blue deck can just do so much with these with these extra cards. Yeah. You know, Andrew's at 18, and it just seems unlikely, despite all the good things he has going on, that Reed will be able to deal enough damage. It is crazy to think that Jessup doesn't have to discard either. That is ludicrous. The whole deck costs one and two. Yeah. You can actually draw five cards and just, just play, play them all. Duke is going to draw his card for the turn. Again, it was a Voyaging Seder. The top card now for the Courser is Garrick, Caller of Beasts. But that's not the kind of game plan that Reed can kind of really get going right now. He's being whittled away at in the air. And he needs to try to figure out a way to deal 18 points of damage and do it quickly. However, the member of the Pantheon is deep in the tank right now. And if you're the opponent, no matter who you are, that has to be very scary, as he is one of the best players in the world 
runner-up in the player of the year race from the professional circuit. Duke will be able to figure out the optimal play. The question, of course, is, is it good enough? All right, so if you look at his mana, right now his Nykthos is tapping for seven. So he only has eight mana available. That's two nightly activations. Now it's nine mana available. It's not really enough yet. Reed may have to somehow hope to survive a second turn, which doesn't seem very likely right now. Getting that life is pretty important, though. So we'll say it's that. not bad. There's a Voyaging Seder. Now it's time to add some mana. Like I said, if at any point Andrew draws his one of Nykthos, then just the floodgates open. So Genesis Hydra is going to come down now. This is a Hydra for six. For six. He has the option of Arbor Colossus, Garrick Collar of Beasts, and Pelucranos. Those are probably the realistic options. Mm -hmm. Remember, another rapid hybridization is in Jessup's hand. So realistically, Reed is just getting a beast. Unless maybe he takes Domery Rod, but even then, when he goes to fight, he's going to get, well, not a beast, a frog lizard. He's so probably just going to get a frog lizard no matter what he does here. Got to go with the Colossus. It has reach, seems pretty reasonable. Yep. Pretty sure when he gets the Colossus by that, he's just going to get a frog lizard. The question here is can Jessup actually get the job done on the next turn? Can he deal enough damage to make it lethal? It really depends on what Jessup drew. Without a Nykthos, my guess is no. If he has Nykthos, he could do something like Nykthos for 100 mana, play Thassa, make everything unblockable, pump some guys, swing, evolve, go crazy. Yeah, hopefully that'll be good enough. I have to imagine it'll be close. Duke going to go reaching for the creatures here. They might all be coming into the red zone now. He only needs a couple blockers. Most of the stuff can't be blocked anyway. Might slow down a touch. Uh, for, don't forget, Nylea is the only creature out there that does not have trample. Nylea gives everybody else trample. Right, so the gods all do that, where they just affect the... They don't ever affect themselves. You know, Perforos doesn't shock you. A giant Heliod doesn't have vigilance. Mm -hmm. um, and so on. So just Nylea coming into the red zone here. What an interesting attack. Chooses just one creature to swing with. It's the biggest one, but it's the only one that doesn't trample. A chump lock here isn't unreasonable. Yeah. I actually think a chump lock here is a quite a reasonable play. You just want to keep your life total high. Make sure nothing really goes wrong. So there's your block. Now, Leo's going to take down the Frostburn here. I'm wondering if a chump lock's actually better than just taking it. You have to chump it eventually, but you're lowering your own devotion count right now. End there's, step. Yeah. Yeah. Rapid hybridization. Going to take care of that Arbor Colossus. No flying blocker, but another frog lizard added to the battlefield. Now, there was the option there. Andrew had two mana up. Instead of hybridizing, he could have used the Bident to taunt all of Reed's creatures in. And then I think swing back for lethal. So yeah. I think that was a missed opportunity. Well, I mean, he can taunt them, but there will still be some back on defense. The because Genesis some are summoning Hydra. sick. Yeah. But that's it. The Voyaging Seder as well. Those are both played okay. this turn. So he'd have two blockers. And I still like his plan of just coming in in the air. It's hard to argue with drawing five cards. Yeah. You know, Tidebinder Mage is going to stay back. This he, would be an attack for seven. If he just finds five. his one of Cyclonic Rift, he now has reached the point where he has seven lands without Nykthos. Yep. Reed has no interaction with Rift. So especially, I think, if Jessup has Rift in his hand, this line is just so safe. Yep. Jessup's going to look at a mid full of cards, try to figure out what the best play is this turn. He doesn't have the Rift, and he doesn't have the Nykthos. Those are both one of in his deck. It is conceivable that he can't win here. It's like likely, another one drop. Yeah, likely no, but those, those would be the two cards that I think if he drew, he just wins immediately. Nick, Rift, because you just cast it and win. Nykthos, because it lets you cast your entire hand, which is probably good enough. Another one drop? Yes. This feels like a Master of Waves. And yeah, that's all the Cloudfin Raptors. The whole set. Tidebinder Mage. Shut down that Hydra. It's a pretty good draw here, evolving yeah. the Raptors. And Reed does not have enough power in play to make a lethal swing anymore. Tidebinder Mage going to shut you down. 
Yeah. Now he really. Huh. Well, I would hope this is the case or something similar. Yeah. If you're Jessup, you, you're drawing five cards a turn. Something like this had better happen. Or maybe it's just not your tournament, you know? Yeah, you have six cards every turn. Five, five bonus cards. I mean, it's... Yeah, you just have a lot of stuff. I mean, look at his board. There's a lot of stuff over there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, actually, that Master Waves and Thassa haven't shown up. Again, those are the payoff cards for this deck. Now, of course, Tidebinder Mage is fantastic in this matchup and against Duke's deck in general. Biden of Thassa is just too good. Look at all this damage it's done. This is all Biden, Trey, too. Yeah, this is a Biden game, and I don't expect Biden to be great against this sort of mid-range green deck. Typically, you're going to want that against Rev decks and Mono Black Devotion. But, you know, the way that things kind of broke, it, it worked out great for Jessup. He started off with some small flyers, and Judge is familiar, drops a Biden, and has been going to work with that thing ever since. I actually might even board out Bidens here, to be honest. I wouldn't he, be surprised at all if he does that. I wouldn't be surprised. It's funny because the card just, like, won him the game, but this is, like I said, a bunch of Judge's familiars into a Biden is an unusual way for Blue to win game one against a green Devotion deck. Yeah, I, I, that's not your game plan to beat them. This is, like I said, this was one of the more beatable draws for Jess, for Jessup. Reed's going to need a lot of sideboard in this matchup to, to have a chance. His game and strategy just doesn't line up well at all. You know, if this is what he does against the bird into bird into sit around draw, like what's going to happen when Jessup curves, you know, Raptor into Tidebinder into Night Veil? Vale? Like oh. things are just going to, or, you know, heaven forbid he plays a Master of Waves, a card which Reed just can't really kill. Yeah, cer certainly in game one. Again, things do get a little bit different after sideboard. You're right. He has more options sideboard. But, I mean, it is going to be a difficult road ahead here for Duke. I do think that game one in this matchup is very difficult for him. He's trying to fight the good fight at this point. But Jessup's board is so gummed up. You know, this might just be a desperation attack here from Duke, hoping that maybe Jessup makes some sort of egregious error. We will see. Well, in de terms of devotion, there are nine devotion for Reed, which is two pumps. It's, well, with the, okay, with the Nick, though, so on. Nykthos taps for nine. So Nykthos is a, you could say, the, the Foyage Seder taps for seven. So he has 16, 17. He has 18 mana. That's four Nylea activations. That's only eight damage. And the power of his creatures combined here, of his trampling creatures, is only seven. So even if Andrew lets all this through, that's only 15. As long as Andrew puts a creature on the Nylea, we, he's, then Reed's probably done. And of course, Nylea not trampling in this situation. Right. Her power is way less relevant because she doesn't trample. You really just count the trampling power here. Yeah, again, this might just be a situation where Reed is hoping that Jessup makes a mistake, and that's all he can hope for. Well, if Jessup blocks too much of his team right now, it is possible that he doesn't have a lethal swing back. Like, pretty improbable. But one thing is that by not holding up a blue mana, Jessup did leave an opening here. So maybe Reed gets some good trades. And then post-combat has a ton of mana and just plays a Pelucranos. And then Pelucranos just goes crazy and eats everything. It's possible, but I, I don't think it's happening. Well, we're going to see how things unfold here. Damage is going to be dealt. Some creatures are going to die, but the Cloudfront Raptors are going to stay on the table, of course, as they do have three toughness. It doesn't look like Reed activated Nylea at all here. Nope. I imagine he's got bigger plans. He has 18 mana to work with. Remember that. That's If he does have Pelucranos, that's Pelucranos for X equals 6. That's two Cloudfin Raptors worth of Pelucranos. Uh, uh, well, he does have Pelucranos. Yeah. It just might not be enough. Uh, he's going to try to go off here. Oh, boy. Okay, Nissa. Don't forget, he hasn't played a land yet for the turn. So maybe he can draw a Nykthos if he has any draws to work with. That made seven. So he's the seven. It made a one, two. It made nine. Apologies. So actually, my original count on the mana was too low. He made nine mana, So with and he spent all nine of it on Nissa plus Pelucranos. So he's going to gain two life. He's going to up this to untap his lands. Yeah, the next land was a Nykthos. Reed missed it by one there. Yep, he floats. 
Now, if he has a Genesis Hydro, that doesn't allow him to play a second land, right? It doesn't just no. shove him into play. No, I mean, he's doing okay here as far as activation goes. Now he's gonna, he's gonna activate a bunch of green mana off of this. This is for 13. His Devotion is, I believe, 13 at the moment. It's for 14, actually. 14. 17, 18. So, again, a large amount of mana being generated here. So, Pelucranos is going to activate its monstrosity for an absurd amount. And it's going to need every bit of that absurd amount. Reed is at 7, so it's the question. I, I'm, I don't know. You have to be pretty good here with the deck to know whether or not you're dead on board. It might be that Reed finally got to this point and now is counting and says, oh, oh, I'm still dead. But maybe he has it. No, I, I mean, because two of those Raptors have damage on, have two damage on them. So he has, oh, wow. So he only has to shoot, you know, each of those for one. He gets to shoot down familiars. I think he also gets to shoot down maybe two of the other Raptors here. So all of this damage gets dealt. He gets to fire off and kill all of this stuff. Oh, wow. And so, so now he gets he's, it. He gets he's it. very much alive. Had Jessup not made the blocks with the two three Raptors. Yeah, I mean it depends. You know, it depends on you know what Jessup's playing around, right? Like how much mana can regenerate? Like because Anilia gives the creatures trample, it can do plus two, plus two, and all this ridiculous stuff, right? Like it, I don't think that it's a situation where Jessup's blocks are wrong. I mean, you'd have to go back and analyze them. It might be a situation where you know. Do I block this way? Can I beat Pelucranos afterward? You know, is that the one card I need to play around? And if that's the case, how do I block appropriately in this situation? Maybe. I mean, I, I still think we'd have to go. Well, you're right. We'd have to. Yeah, go you back. have to go way back. It's hard to say. Here's a bunch of mana because now he's drawn his Nykthos. He plays a Frostmourne pre-combat. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is this the Rift? It's a Thassa. So down to five. Play this. Activate Mutavault. Okay, so he has five mana. Down to four mana to activate Mutavault. He can may use that four to make Binder and Mutavault unblockable. Is he one mana short? Okay, so he used made eight there. I think he's one short. No, he, he can't attack. Be. He can't attack with Frostburn. It no, Frostburn, Frostburn, where he can't attack. It just came into play, but Tidebinder so, and Mutavolt can. He just doesn't have enough power then to deal seven. He only yeah. has six points of power on the board. And this. His hand, it looks like he has a couple extra islands here. It's a little strange to think, and I, 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 mean, I, I don't want to say that Danny has drawn poorly off of these draw fives, but it is a little wild to think that he doesn't have anything great going on. I mean, it, I mean it's crazy to think that Reed is going to, could get this game one. All right, trigger this again. Four more draws. And that puts Reed to one. Now, here's a question. I'm going to go back. If Andrew doesn't have enough mana to kill Reed this turn, is there any validity to just swinging the two judges' familiars and hoping to draw that Cyclonic Rift, playing Nykthos, saying go? I think that that's definitely a valid play. Right, because if you hit it, then I, then I think we're still in Ch business. Yeah, chances are he wins. Right, but I, chances that he survives this turn to me seem like zero. Uh, I would, <laughs> I would be surprised. <laughs> I mean, this night, you're right. We start out with a 14-14 Pelucranos and about Nykthos that taps for like 60 mana and some, yeah, Reed could probably kill Andrew from 50. I would be very surprised if Jessup makes it out of this turn. Given that he only has two mana available, given that a whole bunch of green monsters are going to turn sideways, Reed's going to play his other Nick, though. Oh, for even more mana. Yep. Delightful. And here's a swing of 1,000 power with Trample. I, Ac actually, 1,000. I actually can't believe that he just won that game. I mean, 
masterfully played. I actually cannot believe that Reed Duke just won that game. Yeah, it, <laughs> I mean, it says something that I'm at the point where, like, I'm smirking about it, but I'm not even surprised. I'm just like, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, that's just like, yeah, he won one of those games that he, he shouldn't have, and I'm not even totally sure how it happened, he, but suddenly he has a one by his name. Like, oh, that Reed Duke. He actually just won a game where his opponent <laughs> drew five cards for numerous turns. And he played just them all. Won. And, and cast them all. Yeah, and cast them all. He actually just won that game. You have to be kidding me. Reed Duke up a game over Andrew Jessup. That isn't even real to me. Game one is supposed to be horrible for him. Oh, it is. It and is it looked horrible. horrible. Andrew had a weak draw in the matchup. Reed had like a pretty good one. It still Wait, looks I'm sorry. horrible. I'm I mean, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know as a player, emotionally, mentally, how it's just like, oh, you know that game where I just drew five cards for three turns in a row? I'm almost certainly going to win the next two since I lost that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll be fine. I'm just playing against, you know, one of the best players in the world where my game one matchup is pretty great since they really only have, you know, a couple of cards to interact with me in Pelucranos. Yeah, that's fine. I lost that one, but I'll certainly win the next two. I'm not saying it's impossible. I would be pretty defeated right now. You have to, I mean, I know all of us have been on that side of a matchup, like when you're learning how to play Magic or like just kind of on your road to getting better, where you're kind of sitting down, you played a game, you made what you thought were pretty good plays, you felt good the entire time, and then suddenly you look at the board and you're just like, I, I think I'm dead, and I'm not sure how I got there, and there's a good chance I shouldn't be here right now. But I don't really get what happened. Like, like, how did, how am I losing? You know, it's, and I think that's like one of those moments. I, I'm blown away. I am blown away that he won that game. What does Jessup have in this sideboard? Okay, well, this is oh as we God. said, this is a pretty good matchup for Jessup. So he doesn't. Yes. Have, he does not have many things go in his sideboard to work that work here. He has an extra Cyclonic Rift. I think that is spectacular in this matchup. Um, at a, almost the entire game. I remember being able to say confidently, well, boy, if Jessup draws the Cyclonic Rift off any of these extra draws, the game is just over. And it was true. So I think going from one to two Cyclonic Rifts gives Andrew that many more opportunities to draw a Cyclonic Rift. Uh, outside of that, not much. OK, he has two Dissolves. I don't even think he wants them. But Reed does have some very big, swingy plays that he could make. So. I'm not opposed to boarding in a Dissolve, but at the same time, if I'm Andrew, I would rather just be tapping out for my own spells than leaving up mana for counters. So extra Cyclonic Rift, I would board that in, and I, I might just stand pat with the other 59 cards. I watch a lot of Magic for a living. Somehow I have worked <laughs> my way into a job for watching Magic for a living and, and commentating on it. And I've watched a lot of great games. The finals of our Standard Open last weekend was definitely one of them. I am blown away that Reed Duke just won that game. I'm actually blown away. All right, so it's let's crazy try to, to trying to explain, okay, a short summary. How did Reed win that game? If you're wondering, like, like what happened? Andrew was drawing five cards a turn, you know? Like, is he was able to keep his life high enough using Corsair of Crufix to not let the creatures be lethal. And he was a, he took a bunch of risks that paid off with a certain with certain top decks so that if he drew the right card he would have as big of an explosive draw as possible so that if those things aligned he could just overpower all of Jessup's extra cards and now Jessup is going to take a mulligan down to six here uh, Duke's in his sideboard really quickly four Nylea's Disciple three Miscutter Hydra two Mizium Orders two Chandra Pyromaster a Scavenging Ooze a Bow and Nylea a Satessan Tactics and a Hornet Queen I expect to see Miscutter Hydra come in Hornet Queen's actually probably pretty good in this matchup as Flyers are a bit of an issue there for Duke um, Mizium Mortars overloading that is very realistic in this matchup uh, maybe the Scavenging Ooze maybe the Bow almost certainly the Tactics so he's got some nice options available to him but truth be told I feel like this is a matchup where again Reed is supposed to lose game one a very high percentage of the time and then hopefully win at game two and game three. But I imagine if you talk to Reed and we say, hey, how's your mono blue matchup? He goes, trying to fade it. I mean, that's it, the plan. I would not be surprised to be said it's my worst matchup in the room. Yeah, my goal is to fade it. And I'm good against, you know, most of the other things. And now he's currently up a game and his opponent is mulliganing. Yeah, he put some missed cutters in his board. He didn't think it was unwinnable. Um, walk me through here out of the sideboard. Was it? 
cards I was looking at. So he, yeah, he has Mizium Mortars. You said he can he actually overload it? Yeah, be, I mean he's got four stomping grounds, four temple abandons, and, and a temple of malice. He's also got four Sylvan carry added, and the Voyaging Seder can untap a red source. So he can get a little creative with it. But yeah, and also Xenagos if that's still in his deck too. So he okay. can he can find a way. I don't know how reliable it is, but I feel like it's reliable enough as he's going to start off with an Elvish Mystic here. Yeah, Reed needs to be fast. Remember that we saw there Jessup have a very slow card advantage he hand. Now let's see what happens when Jessup has the aggro draw. Yep. And this is a whole, is another problem for Reed, and it's a whole different type of problem. No. I mean, if Jessup goes on to win this game or win this match, I mean, his ability to rebound after losing a, a, an insane game like that where he was what looked to be so far ahead will be really, really telling. Duke is going to play a Temple of Abandon. Take a look at the top card. He's going to put that to the bottom. Yeah. Now there's a Sylvan Carry added. So you can already see two sources of red mana out there. This game it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. I think he can hit his third source. Both players doing their best to ignore their opponent, it feels like, in this matchup. And a yeah. lot of the Nykthos decks really do operate that way. We see the red to red Nykthos decks are, are kind of the same deal. Now, another thing that we could bring into the equation just for game number one, and again, you have to go back and watch the game because there's a lot of things to pick up in that game, but Danny, excuse me, Andrew, keep calling his brother's name, Andrew did draw two copies of Rapid Hybridization. Now, one took out a copy of Blue Chronos, but the other one took out an Arbor Colossus. And maybe, you know, was that the best use of that card? Is he supposed to save Rapid Hybridization just for Blue Chronos? Maybe yes, maybe no. I mean, when he killed that Arbor Colossus, it certainly made sense at the time, I would say. Well, at the same time, just swinging a creature, suiciding into Arbor Colossus isn't even, like, in the grand scheme of things, that's probably okay. I think Andrew is playing from a position of such perceived strength that he was fine firing off Rapids that way. Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah, if I get rid of the guy's, if, if Reed's Reach creature, you know, how does he win? Hey, give me more cards. Yeah. A Voyaging Seder and a Stomping Ground is Duke's turn. So, again, you can already see three red mana available out there. So, Mizium Mortars with Overload is certainly a realistic possibility. He does have to get a little, you know, creative around that Judge's Familiar, making it cost seven instead of six, potentially. But Jessup is going to draw a card. He did not hit his third land drop. Again, he did mulligan this game, and he will come in with the Flyers, and actually on the ground as well with the Frostburn Weir. This is dangerous for Jessup. It's the kind with the aggro hand started out well, but now it's the kind of hand that Reed could really beat. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about the mono blue aggro deck is that when it doesn't get its high synergy things going, you know, like Master of Waves, Thassa, or multiple evolves, its creatures, it's kind of playing a lot of one power creatures. It's like this aggro deck that its creatures just don't hit very hard. So your opponent can actually just take a lot of abuse from your guys. You smell and, busy mortars? Wow. I sure do. Wow. Make you pay one more. Wow. Don't mind if I do. We were wondering if he'd be able to overload I it. I was skeptical. I saw, <laughs> the, I saw he had enough red sources. I was like, well, maybe sometimes he'll overload it. But certainly he can't board it in with the intention of overloading it. Just wrong. All Jessup can Devastating. do is pass the turn back. <laughs> doesn't hit his third land. Reed just has to have a follow-up card. I don't care what it's called. I think it's Genesis Hydra for... Bunch. Oh, me, oh, my. It's a, oh, oh, no. No, it's just kidding. Wrong Hydrum, Matthias. Oh. Wrong Hydrum. Oh, it's the pro blue one against the mono blue deck. It's the three turn clock. Here we go. Turn one. Bam. In for seven comes the Duke. And in situations like this for mono blue devotion, the way you beat me, Scudder Hydra, is you're kind of ahead and you barely hold on. You kill them. Yeah, you that's to, your answer. You kill them. Maybe you bob and weave with the Mutavault or a Rapid Hybridization token. But the board can't be empty when this comes into play. A Nightfell Spectre has shown up to the party, but it's a little late. The literal only interaction Mono Blue has with Miss Cutter Hydra is one, Mutavault, two, Rapid Hybridization Tokens, and three, Overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Mm -hmm. Three is not an option on this board. No. Um, oh, this no. card is just going to kill. Oh, is it oh, another one? No. Oh, okay. No, it's just the other Hydra. Yeah, it's that okay. Hydra for a whole bunch. For another big thing. How many is that for? That's for nine? Okay. Yeah. A average turn. Sure. Average turn. It's for a bunch. Which of these things would you like to cast? This is... <sighs> An Arbor Colossus seems just fine. Just fine. And an attack for seven, I guess that's okay, too. It's going to be one of those stories for Andrew Jessup. And like, someone's asking, so then what happened game two? And I'm like, well, turn four, he overloaded Mizium Mortars at me. Wasn't expecting that one, but it sure was good. Like, all right. And it looks like Reed Duke is going to 
I have to it's gonna move I, on I to think, four, I, yeah. I think so in, in, in just a minute here again. For Andrew, this is going to be, I mean, it, it's, it's tough for me to watch. Uh, so I can only imagine how difficult it is for him. You know, you asked me in the middle, if you would have asked me in the middle of game one, you know, when he's got a Biden and a bunch of flyers out there, who's yeah. going to win? Yeah, Jessup is going to win. That's who's going to win. And now, instead, Reed Duke of the Pantheon, and I know one of his teammates, so. William Jensen, is watching at home. He's got to have a smile on his face. It's hard for me not to, and I can't imagine that there isn't one on Reed's face right now. He wins the match. Two games is here with Green Red Devotion over Mono Blue Devotion, and if things break his way, he's the elimination rounds. And I imagine the people that are above him right now are thinking, please don't let things break his way. <laughs>